I've been getting a lot of questions about what my personal budget looks like. So I'm gonna share that with you today. I'm gonna to break down every single line item specifically and give you guys tips and tricks about each line item, how you could save more money and how you can be more efficient with your money. So I'm gonna get right to it and I'm gonna start with property tax. So as you know, we don't have a mortgage and it's kind of nice because we paid off our mortgage at 28 years old. We're now 32. So it's been quite a few years without a mortgage payment. We've taken all that money and invested that money instead on a monthly basis. But when we made the move to Texas, we actually increased our property property tax quite substantially. Now, at the same time, we actually reduced our income tax because our state income tax went away. Now, obviously from Kentucky to Texas, the transfer was from sales tax and property tax to obviously offset the income tax. But however, overall on a net basis, it's much better because the more you make, you get zero tax and there is no cap to how much you make. So it's actually a better win as long as you're increasing your income with time. But we do pay a thousand dollars per month into a sinking fund. So what we do is take it from our personal account, move it over to our high yield savings, and we put a thousand dollars a month to have about $12,000 per year readily available in that fund when property taxes are due. So that's what we currently pay. And if we had any more expensive of a house, that property tax fund would probably go quite a bit up. So that's $1,000. Now our second line item is $500 for my daughter. So I have two daughters, one is four months and one is two and a half years old. So therefore they don't require a ton of expense. And my wife has breastfed and also she stays at home. So there's no daycare costs. So really the only costs we have are basic child needs like clothing and shelter and food and stuff like that. And so anything like that will be under this line item. $500 is a rough estimate. It's $250 per kid. This doesn't include any investing for the children. So that's not included or wrapped up into this. But at the same time, it is good to note that $250 a month is a pretty good estimate for a child. Now with time, that's probably going to go up, but they're pretty young at this point in time. There is a stat out there that says most parents will spend on average about $250,000 from zero to 18 years old for most kids. Now, I don't know how true that is, but that is a stat I have seen out there before. But the best thing is to prepare for kids is to make sure you expect an additional expense to come because they will come. And for anybody that knows the story about my daughter with Dravet syndrome, all medical costs are not included in this $500, trust me. And then next we have insurances and this is everything excluding my health insurance. So we have our health insurance through my business. So therefore it is actually directly through my business. And there's a few other things that go through my business as well that I will note throughout this video. But all in all, all of our insurances cost about $535 a month excluding health insurance. This includes car, this includes includes dental, this includes term life insurances, this includes homeowner's insurance, this includes ID theft protection, which I think in terms of an insurance, this includes long-term disability and also umbrella insurance. So all in all, those insurances are very necessary for our particular purpose. Now, obviously everyone's situation is different, but the ones I mentioned are pretty relevant to most young families and something I'd be looking to if you don't know already. What you don't want to happen with insurances is to go too cheap on these and then be bitten the ass on the back end. And I didn't mention the type of coverage we have for each one because that's a whole different video, but a lot of these are very important. And one of the most important ones of this list is term life insurance. I do have a video in the top right hand corner that you can click to watch more on that. So our next expense is gas. So we only have one car due to our situation. We don't need two cars with our living situation. I work from home and my wife can stay at home. So we don't have to go anywhere really, to be honest. And if we do, we can coordinate pretty easily with two young children. Now, as they get older, it might make things a little more complicated. We might get two cars in the future. Not going to rule that out. But for right now, we have one car. So our gas bill is roughly about $100 per month. So with Kroger fuel points and the low cost of gas in Texas at the current moment, we only pay around 100 bucks. So that's usually about two to three Phillips per month with our car that we have a 2023 VW Atlas. And most Phillips are around 20 to $30 max. So let's say $35 on the high end times three is about $105 per month. And that's probably the max that we fill up in a given month. Now where we spend a lot of money is food. My wife and I are into health and fitness in a big way. Way. And my wife and I want to make sure we get the proper nutrients for our health. So therefore we spend about $1,500 per month. And here's how it's broken down. We do online ordering for groceries so we can control the price before we actually hit checkout. We know our list pretty in depth. It's pretty much saved every single week. And it's actually about the same list almost every week. Anyway, we don't have a ton of variation, a little bit here and there, but not too much to where we know we can get that to $250 every single week with a family of four. So that's my wife and I, plus my daughters being two and a half in four months. Now, obviously my four month old, does breastfeed at the moment. So she's not actually eating food at the current moment. The additional 500 comes from things like additional eating out and things of that nature, where we decide to do something outside of the norm, outside of our regular meals, our 
meal preps, and we decided to do something different. That's where the additional 500 comes, but we know our grocery bill and our overall food cost. And like I said, we love to be very intentional about health and fitness. So our next bill is fitness, and that's $82 a month, roughly. This consists of an LA Fitness membership and also my wife's Peloton membership. I'm also considering going to a boxing gym and adding that onto the mix as well. And also personal training, which one-on-one -on -one personal support would be an additional cost to that. So it would be including all of that. But as of now, we do only spend $82 a month to make sure we have full membership to what we're trying to accomplish. And our next line item is health supplements. This is about $150. This one kind of ranges a bit, but it depends where we're at in the cycle of our protein supplementation, creatine supplementation, other supplementation. And we wrap that into about $150 a month on average. And that's pretty consistent, but there will be some ebbs and flows. Our next one is internet and TV. So we did very well with this category. So it's $75 roughly per month between the two things. We have YouTube TV and we also have Spectrum Internet. So Spectrum Internet actually goes through my business. So it's technically not a personal expense. And then YouTube TV is actually split amongst three people in our family. So we actually take the total and divide it by three, which comes out to be about $21 a month I'm paying my brother-in-law. So don't tell YouTube TV we do that, but it is pretty nice to have it and pretty convenient. And quite honestly, we don't watch a whole lot of TV anyway, so it's not that relevant. Our next bill is utilities. So, so this is about $400 on average. We do budget billing and even billing depending on which service we're talking about here. So this could be electric, this could be energy, this could be trash, this could be recycling, and this could also be sewage and water. So all of those together roughly average about $400 per month here in Texas. That is what we pay. And also we do have even billing. I highly recommend budget billing or or even billing one of the two, or you can sometimes have both of them options. It just depends which utility company you're working with. But all this is, is taking the last 12 months, taking the average, and then basically charging the same amount for 11 months, taking your total consumption in month 12, comparing to what you've actually used and billing you for the difference or giving you a refund. And then even billing is typically a 12 month ongoing running average cycle where it's just gonna continually update your average bill. And there's gonna be a lot less peaks and valleys, which is nice for places like Texas or Arizona where the heat is crazy in the summer and then the winter it cools off and you have huge drops and huge spikes. It's a nice way to kind of avoid that. And then we have dogs. So we have two dogs. We have a big German Shepherd mix and also a tiny Pomeranian Chihuahua, Nico and Charlie. And if you guys have been following me for long enough, you know, Nico was actually the reason behind the name of Budget Dog. So Nico's face was the picture of Budget Dog in the beginning of time. And obviously the brand's transcended since that from a dog to a real person, but Nico and Charlie, usually about $35 a month is about what we run. It's typically just one big bag of dog food and no, they don't need extra treats. They're good to go because they get plenty of scraps. And lastly, as part of our spend on a monthly basis is miscellaneous. So I highly recommend everybody to have this category. Here's where you go wrong is if you put too much and it becomes a black hole. So everything you think about is miscellaneous and, and all of these little things add up, add up, add up. And then all of a sudden the miscellaneous category is 2X what your actual budget from the remainder is. And that's where people go wrong a lot of times. So we spend about four thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars per month obviously that's not exact every month but we put five hundred dollars of that into miscellaneous so these are things that pop up that you're not really expecting but you know something's going to pop up and you actually have looked back at your previous spending and you start to get a really good idea of like what this category should sit at you don't want to put too much or too little here but you want to give yourself some wiggle room because you don't want to be a freak about spend and you don't want to feel guilty if you go over in a specific category miscellaneous can actually cover you some people do slush funds it kind of depends what your motive is and also how you prefer to do this but we just do a miscellaneous column and and then anything over in like food or health supplements or anything like that, we will just implement that into miscellaneous and total. What are we mostly worried about is the total spend, not the individual line items. So as long as total spend is in check, we should be good. But we like miscellaneous here, put $500 here for kind of overages, additional things that pop up. Think of things like candles or Windex or random household items, toilet paper, things of that nature where they kind of don't go in the grocery list, but they kind of show up from time to time. They're not really consistent, but they are consistent. Those types of things would fall here. And some people like to do this separate in their own line item. That's totally fine as well. This is just how we personally do it and there's no right or wrong. So overall, that spend is $4,877, but that does not include any investments at all. So I'm not gonna get into the details of the numbers behind our investments because that's not really important, but I will mention maxes and you can probably do some calculations to kind of figure some things out here. So we do have two IRAs, we do have an HSA, and we do max out two solo 401ks, not the employer portion, but just the employee portion. So you can probably do the math on that in collective total. That's 
that's what we're spending on investments primarily. But outside of that, we do a lot of investing as well. So we do the taxable brokerage for the remainder portion that we have available income for. So that's also an additional big investment. And that's also our freedom fund. And that's where I always talk about online is the brokerage is the access to freedom as soon as possible. We just really like the flexibility of that account. Obviously, this video is not to get into the details of each investment account. We also have a very small portion allocated to private equity. We have a very small portion allocated to Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum as well. And also we have been doing a lot of real estate deals recently. Multifamily syndications to be specific in 2023, that might expand, but all of those investments are being fully funded at all times. So we don't only max the accounts that we have maxes on, but we also try to put as much money as humanly possible in the other types of accounts like the brokerage account and things like that. So all in all, if we're spending roughly, let's call it $5,000 per month, we would take $5,000 a month times 12, assuming our lifestyle is exactly the same, which it might not be, but in retirement. And I take that five times 12 is 60,000. I divide that by 4%. If you're assuming the 4% rule, that gets you about $1.5 million. So technically speaking, to sustain our lifestyle right now, we would need investments of $1.5 million for let's call it the next 30 years to sustain our lifestyle. We do have that that is already set aside within our various investment accounts. Now, obviously we're growing that. I'm not trying to live off of my investments at this stage of the game, but with time, this is how you build financial freedom. You take your actual expenses on a given month in retirement. Obviously I'm using our current day ones. You multiply that by 12 and you divide that by 4% or you multiply it by 25, whichever way you want to get there. That is your financial freedom number. And there's a lot of debate around the 4% rule, but in general, that's going to get you maybe 30 years of living expenses. And that's also assuming inflation is factored into that. But again, I have no plans of stopping to work. So I probably will have active income most of my life anyway, but it's nice in case something happens to me that I do have this set aside that it will take care of our family regardless if I'm here or not. Also going back to that, that's why we have long-term disability and that's why we have term life insurance. And in case the inevitable happens, this stuff is good to put in your financial picture so you're not screwed when those things may happen because they do happen to more people than you expect. And nobody ever thinks that they're the person it's going to happen to until it happens. So I hope that helps you guys break down my specific budget. We will update this from time to time as life changes and stuff like that. But for the most part, we have a paid off house, we have a paid off car, and those are our expenses across the board. Obviously, I talked a little bit on investing as well. And that's really as simple as it needs to be. You don't need to overcomplicate your financial picture and you can reach financial freedom with simple simplified investing. And that's exactly what we teach every single day in Budget Dog Academy. So with that being said, guys, I will see you guys next Monday.